Hello everybody, I'm Dr. Manshu Mathur and we'll be talking about the biomechanics of the shoulder joint today. The shoulder complex mainly comprises of four joints, glenohumeral joint, acromioclavicular joint, sternoclavicular joint and scapulothoracic joint. Glenohumeral being the largest, we'll be discussing about that today. It is a classical synovial type of ball and socket joint. The proximal articulating structure is the concave shaped glenoid fossa that is a part of scapula. The glenoid fossa is oriented laterally and superiorly. The distal articulating surface is formed by the convex shaped head of humerus. The humerus is oriented medially, superiorly and posteriorly. The head of humerus is inclined from the shaft in frontal plane at an angle of nearly 130 to 150 degrees. The proximal end of humerus is also torsioned posteriorly nearly to 30 degrees. The articulation of glenoid cavity and humerus is not congruent and lacks stability as the surface area of glenoid cavity is very small as compared to that of the head of humerus. To enhance the surface area of articulation, connective tissues like articular cartilage and glenoid labrum contributes. Glenoid labrum increases the concavity of the fossa being thicker from periphery and thin at the center. Now let us talk about the ligaments. The glenohumeral joint is re reinforced with three major ligaments. The superior glenohumeral ligament, the middle glenohumeral ligament and the inferior glenohumeral ligament. The superior glenohumeral ligament limits the inferior translation of the humerus. The middle glenohumeral ligament limits the anterior translation of the humerus with the arm in 45 degrees of abduction. The inferior glenohumeral ligaments has two bands. One is the anterior band that limits the anterior translation of humerus at 45 degrees of abduction and external rotation. And the posterior band limits the posterior translation with arm at 45 degrees of abduction and internal rotation. There are other available ligaments also, like transverse humeral ligament that bridges both the tubercles and makes the roof for bicipital groove. Another ligament is the coracohumeral ligament that extends from the tip of the coracoid process to the greater tubercle. Another important ligament is the coracoacromial ligament that bridges between the coracoid process and the acromion process and eventually makes a very important part of the coracoacromial arch. Talking about the movements of the shoulder joint, the degree of freedom is 3. In sagittal plane, flexion moves up to 180 degrees and extension up to 50 degrees. In frontal plane motion, we have abduction up to 180 degrees and adduction to neutral and 30 to 40 degrees beyond. In the transverse plane motion, we have external rotation and internal rotation. External rotation makes it up to nearly 90 degrees and internal rotation makes it up to nearly 60 to 70 degrees. Talking about arthrokinematics, in flexion and abduction, the head of the humerus rolls superiorly and slides inferiorly. And in extension and adduction, it rolls inferiorly and slides superiorly. In external rotation, the head spins posteriorly and slides anteriorly, and vice versa in internal rotation. Talking about the static stability given by the musculature, 
The main muscles contributing are the deltoid with its anterior, middle and posterior fibers along with supraspinatus, infraspinatus and subscapularis. Taking the muscles in account, the supraspinatus and deltoid all the fibers has its direction of action superiorly which compresses the head of humerus directly into the glenoid fossa and stabilizes the joint. Thanks for watching the video. Please like, share and subscribe our channel. And for any queries and questions, please do write in the comment box. Thank you so much. From Jaipur Rehab, I am Dr. Himanshu Mathur signing off.